uh, something crazy this mm-hmm. week. Uh, I watched all of Batman the Caped Crusader on Amazon Prime. Is that an animated series, the new one? It's the brand new animated series, and I uh, I was a big fan. I'm not gonna lie. Big, big all right, fan. that's good. You know they've been they've been hitting it, smashing it out of the park with their animated series for Batman for it's, a long time now. It's interesting because they changed like a a lot of the origin stories of a lot of the villains and stuff. But oh, yeah? it didn't feel forced. It felt it felt fresh. You know, it felt like a different universe as Batman since we're so used to the multiverse now. You know, right, right, right. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, I think pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I dig that. Um, another big accomplishment this week: uh, we hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube. We did. That was as of the time of this recording today. Yep, today, right around noon. Right around noon. We actually missed the mark where it was like a thousand. It was like we were at one hundred three or something by that time. Yeah, it was like nine nine eight for like five hours and then it was like Ooh, <laughs> you know it was cool so thank you like everyone finally you know yeah anyone who's listening on youtube or if you still have not subscribed and you're listening on the podcast make sure you go to youtube and help us out there yep. um appreciate everyone who listens on spotify apple wherever you might get your daily weekly dose of squad games content so yes yeah uh today we're going to see if this is up everyone's alley. We're doing something a little different this week. I think we're going to talk about um, the three things on the docket that we're going to talk about for this episode are, do you want to take it away, G? Absolutely. So today we're going to be talking about making battle reports just in general, you know, in, in, in celebration of hitting a thousand, you know, and the battle reports have helped us get there. So want to kind of share how we did it and, you know, like what people can try to do if they want to make their own. Uh, we got where the golden tickets can be found if you're looking to still get a golden ticket for this this last year of Kill Team, this last year of second edition, going into third. And then, you know, we want to just talk up on our thoughts in third now that more stuff has been revealed. And, you know, we're probably only weeks away from the release. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Hopefully it's not four months like when they're nightmare. like, <laughs> when they're like yeah, literally the nightmare box, which was a nightmare for content creators. It was like, hey. We got this really cool team coming out. And then That's it. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing from like two months. It was lit. But yeah, at LVO, when they released it, you're just like, is it going to so come out? <laughs> we could be waiting for two months. They're like, hey, here's Hive Storm. Here's all the hype. And now you're going to wait as we slowly release rules for two they, months. They, they would push it to Christmas. Yeah. They... A Christmas release, you know. <laughs> <laughs> imagine. Imagine. Uh, we're all we all started playing already games workshop from everything that you've said you just haven't released the rule books yet <laughs> that would be that, that'd be exciting oh yeah man it sure would be i mean it's yeah. gonna be a fun time so battle reports you know that's been the newest thing we've been making mm-hmm. on youtube it is of the hobby highlander mm-hmm. we're gonna talk a little bit about how we do it um kind of our equipment the thought process and if you're looking to do it what might make you successful as well? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's going to, it's, I think we've been talking about it for about a year or a year and a half it's actively on the podcast. We've been like, Hey, you know, we're going to start doing battle reports. And here and, we are, you know? And yeah. A year later. <laughs> Finally, but, we're in our battle report arc. Yeah. 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 Is, this, <laughs> is this what they do now? I don't know. I was trying to not hit my oh. stuff in front of me. I was doing a dab. <laughs> If people still do that, that and planking. Remember planking? Oh man, planking, bro! Gone. That was so much fun. You just plank in the middle of the road. I feel like I've seen a few people plank, but I never participated in planking. Dude, wait until we get like a planking kill team. They're all just like planks. That would be lit. I feel like you could build that right instead of gluing them on their bases. You just glue them sideways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That'd be that'd be an option. Um, but anyways, back to battle reports. So let's go over the basics, right? The obvious things you need is a camera, you need models, and you need a friend. Mm-hmm. So as long as you have that, you can make a battle report. That's that's the easiest way to do it. Uh, if you want to take it up a notch and you want to add your own spin on stuff, uh, I think one of the first things you should do is see what advantages or things you already have at your disposal. Like, for example, we had a bunch of camera equipment and we had experience working with these devices already. So going into streaming, even before we did battle reports, we kind of had an idea of what we were going to do. 
And then, of course, we learned a little more. You know, we failed a few times and we got better, and now we're doing pretty good. Uh, so look at what you have at your disposal or your friends and everyone nearby and start there. And then you can really, you know, design things the way, like, what makes you unique? What helps you stand out, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think, Dakota? Yeah, uh, there's a couple things. So if you're looking to start doing battle reports, you start looking to record your games, you know, you can start off with TTS, right? That's the cheapest, the easiest way to go. Um, and I know quite a few other content creators that do do that. And they post them on their Patreon or in their local discords or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's not really unique, right? So there's a lot of people that can do that because that's the most widely accessible, easiest thing to do. The next thing would be to get some kind of camera or your phone and record it. But that's kind of lower quality content, not not a ton of people are going to watch, right? It's the easiest thing to go to a tournament. And I think Warp Charged Gaming used to record all of his, um, all of his games at whenever he would go to tournaments. I don't know if he's still around, um, which is cool content, you know, like watching tournament games is something where we kind of started. Um, in fact, um, our stream setup and our recording process has taken years to put together. Absolutely years, years and lot thousands of dollars. Right. Um, and you definitely should not start there because battle reports and kill team doesn't generate tons and tons of views. Right. Um, I kind of had a philosophy of like what we wanted to do. Like I've seen a lot of battle reports. Who are the battle report channels right now? We have six sided Legion. Um, you got mountainside. mountainside tabletop, right? Which I should be meeting them at Nova. That should be fun. You got um, drop dice, drop dice, and heaven forbid I forget the last. There was there's a couple that does it, and I can't remember who they are, but there's a couple that does it. Uh, Cyrak, he does battle reports. He's Glass Cyrak half, does them as well. Glass half dead. Um, I don't think I've seen a glass half dead battle report in quite some time been a little bit uh, on the low maybe he hasn't maybe he's doing them but i'm just not aware of it yeah so something that we have that not everyone does is we have somebody who can sit at the computer and we've designed uh we work with obs and we we've, we've designed a custom layout that i've spent lots of time doing uh, tinkering tinkering fixing things changing stuff i make everything in inkscape export them as pngs bring them into uh, obs and uh, currently work from there, right? And then we have a couple tools and tricks of the trade, how we change points and all that kind of stuff um, <clears throat> through OBS. But the main thing that Giacomo said is that we have a lot of camera equipment. I've been wanting to stream and do YouTube for years, years and years and years, mm -hmm. uh, like six to eight years. So for every Christmas, I was asking for lights or cameras or this or that. Um, <laughs> And then Giacomo already had two great Sony mirrorless cameras. So with four, now we have four Sony mirrorless cameras. We have three Mevos. We have a 4K dice cam that I just got in today. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think seven or eight lights, right? And we have a space. Not everyone has a space that you yep. can that you can stream in um or record in so we have a, a small studio 10 by 14 um but again like you should always start where you're comfortable and then build from there if it's something that you like enjoying go from there um g do you have anything else because i don't want to ramble on too much on that no no worry i mean i think that's perfect right never start <coughs> way over your budget or anything like that more than your means can handle like if you have to start with a phone and recording with there, just doing kind of like what mini wargaming used to do with the camcorder, do that, right? You know, mm -hmm. you can improve from there. It starts somewhere. You, you get better at it. Like that's just the normality. But when we were doing podcasts, we weren't even doing a video format right now. You know, now now we are because we decided that we is have this, enough is this tools to do it. So, you know. Episode 113. This is 113 now, you know. <sighs> just keep doing them, keep making them better, hopefully each time. And, um, you know, just progress from there. And don't forget to have fun. Like, that's a big thing, right? It's like you have to, you got to keep the flow going, you know, have have good rapport with your opponents, like your mm -hmm. friends and stuff, right? Whoever you bring on. 
because uh, you know uh, heaven forbid that you're arguing with somebody the whole time though that could be interesting in its own right maybe you you're like the drama battle reports that's mm -hmm. what you do you know you're all yeah. about that juice the, the fighting <laughs> juice <laughs> i think another important thing is audio right uh oh, audio yeah. more than anything else like we have one particular video that we put out i'm sure that a lot of people know it uh it was the hive stream one where my like my document camera was the camera's audio that was going and it's, yeah, you sounded like a tin can it is awful <laughs> it is absolutely awful and we actually lost a subscriber from it we didn't gain <laughs> anything it was great <laughs> but i felt like the conversation was good enough that we kept it on the channel um but the number one thing that's going to make people stick around to your games is if people can see stuff and if they can stand it by listening, right? So like we're humans and we wanna see, taste, smell, hear things, right? So if you can make a lot of those things great, that's what people are gonna look out for, right? So audio is something important. You get the, you could get DJI, um, like uh, lapel microphones or Rode, or you can choose any kind of a company. Some companies are cheaper than others, right? And you kind of get what you pay for in audio. That's something that's really huge, right? Yeah. Um, audio is so expensive. It's so ridiculous. Uh, today, I had to go buy a 100. Let me get you this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, audio can definitely be over the, over the cost. And it's important to make this sure was good. $100. It was $90. Uh, ninety dollars. This Rode AI mic, right? I'm hey, very, it's useful. I'm, I'm very upset. But um, see, we're, we're investing in it because once you get it, it's yours, right? Yeah. So you can use it forever. Like, so that's the upside of investing in your, in your studio, in your craft, or whatever. You know, investing in your battle reports because we're talking yeah. about battle reports here. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think it's important to have painted models you can do with without painted models you know because i get it you know if this is just your hobby and you like doing it we, we can't always put all the time in and i get that you mm -hmm. wouldn't ask people to do that if it's entertaining i'll watch gray mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that but if you can you know add a little more showmanship it's always nice for for me I, th I think that's the other thing is that you have to kind of curtail to your people who are watching right um one thing that i know that annoys me when I'm watching a stream or a, a battle report is players not having painted models or well painted models. And that's like a promise that I wanted to make ourselves that we weren't going to have poorly painted models on the channel. Now our last battle report, you know, I had to paint models in 45 minutes uh, because the whole world was falling apart. So I already broke my own rule. But that's and besides gonna, the point. That, that's going to happen, you know. Like <laughs> again, expectations mm -hmm. is what you'd like, but like reality is, oh, I only had maybe two hours to to at least just put them together, mm -hmm. and it's at least it's functional, you know. Absolutely. So like you know, never never beat yourself up for at least doing it, because at least you did it, you know. Like, absolutely. And, and and other people will look at you and they they might say something, but they're not trying it, you know. Mm -hmm. So at least you're doing it, you know. So yeah. there's always that. The other thing that you're going to find is like in the YouTube content comments, you will find people who leave negative remarks, but then you go and you look at your subscriber count and you're like, oh, well, this person said something negative, but we got plus 25 subscribers from this video. So there's 25 people who liked it enough to, you know, want to watch more. So, you know, sometimes that's, that's important to keep your, your mentality strong too, because as a content creator, I don't know if there's a lot. We never really got feedback on the podcast until we started doing YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah and, it was big. Yeah. And then now now we're getting, we have a lot wider people listening to us. So <clears throat> it's important that if you start doing battle reports to realize that some people are going to say negative things and just brush it off, right? Try to do your best and that's all you can do. Um, so keep your mentality strong for sure. Um, another thing is to generate people coming to your streams and stuff more or, or your 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 battle reports more right is what makes you unique what is your goal and philosophy are you just trying to pump out five battle reports a week cool people might subscribe because that's unique how, how many people are doing that out here right that's not, a lot that's a lot 
right? Yeah. Yeah. So people might just be like, oh, just pure. I'm just guilty madness. That's my name. I'm going to watch everything. <laughs> you know, let's go. You know, maybe that happens, right? Um, but you kind of want to have like a philosophy of like what you want to push out and kind of like your thought process as a creator, right? Um, Giacomo, do you want to explain a little bit of, of like, our kind of like thought process and what we want to do. Yeah. So we started streaming first, right? Streaming tournaments. That's what we did. We were TOs running kill team events. So still we are. figured still are. And we still are. So um it would make sense that we'd want to do more competitive focused, competitive driven battle reports. Or you can do fun narrative stuff. Sorry, that exists. That's uh but we're we're our drive is to play a little more competitive if we can, you know, even if the team isn't the most competitive, just to Play as optimally as you can, you know, um, and that works for us. That's what we like to do. And so we're going to be more passionate about doing that stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So you find uh, in our stuff, competition is a thing we push, but never to the point where it's unfun for your opponents because no one wants to play in a bad sportsman competition, you know? That's, mm -hmm. that's just not fun either. So our philosophy is to be competitive, have a good time, be nice to your opponent, have great looking models, right? Mm -hmm. Simple. Very, very simple. Um, and also, you know, make sure that um, our models are looking as good as they can. And so, so is the, the people who we, who we have come on stream, right? Um, ultimately, I think visually, you know, we are watching a visual medium. So we want to mm -hmm. make sure that uh, it's visually pleasing to anyone who's trying to watch, right? Um, I think that's, something that's relatively important at least at least for me as as a content as a creator right um and like i said you can start off with just a phone you know and then you can get audio and cool you're making battle reports you're making content you're building an audience right and that's something that's like really important just to start off with um Gee, what kind of goes into you behind the scenes? Because we have, we have like, I don't know, 12, 15 different scenes and cameras you can choose <laughs> from and all that kind of stuff. So what, when you're, you're sitting there at the computer manually controlling everything, because that's the other thing. My, my biggest thing was like, I don't want to spend eight hours editing a battle report from <laughs> 10 different cameras. No way. It not takes for, too long. <laughs> not for Kill Team. We do that for Hobby Highlander, and that's that's good. That's good enough, right? <laughs> Agreed. Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe if we had someone doing this for Hobby Highlander, it would be even easier. Like, who knows, right? It's besides the point. <clears throat> well, yeah. What goes behind the scenes a lot of the time is I have to think about when the most action is happening, whether that's somebody talking with someone making motions, you know, like um, in the most recent episode, you guys both decided to pray to the Ember, which I thought was a pretty good moment. It's very funny. You can check that out on the, uh, the, the episode mm -hmm. the most recent. I'll try to link report. it here. What time is it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, you know, um, try to find the action. So you keep people engaged. So I'm, I have a, a series of the other camera feeds shown to me. So I can see where I think the most action is going to happen. And I go to that page and have it ready. As soon as I see it, then I move it to the mainstream. And now you're actually watching it. That's called, and, that's called uh, studio, uh, studio mode, Studio right? mode. Yeah, you can have studio mode ever. So you can have your, your feeds ready. Uh, we have a series of hot key buttons. You can usually get those through like a, a stream deck. You can, you can also just use the quick commands as well. But the stream deck works really nice for that so that I can control points, you know, on the fly. If my, if one of the players wasn't updating their stuff, which happens from time to time, I get it. You know, you're in the moment. I can't fully expect everybody to do everything. That's what the moderator's for. It's what I'm working on. You know, I'm editing and making sure it's flowing smoothly. You know, I'll ask questions going like, oh, are you sure you have this many points? Just making sure. So everything looks looking as best as it can be. Um, that's generally what's going on in the back. And at the same time, I'm making sure the microphones are working, nothing just crashed or anything, uh, or trying to repair it if it does crash, you know, try to respond to the stream, because we also stream it mm -hmm. as on it's Twitch. getting onto Twitch as well. You know, try to respond to them or let one of the guys know, like, hey, they just asked you a question, you know, here's the question, go ahead and respond to it, please. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's a engagement, engaging your audience is important. So like that kind of stuff, prepping them. Um, 
Yeah, production and role is fun. So sometimes it's good for the stream to stream your games as well because a lot of times, sometimes uh, Twitch, if something's being misplayed, Twitch can point it out. If not, the players like forget something, or if you know, because also the the person streaming is doing all the cameras or doing everything. Sometimes it's hard to pay attention to also the rules while everything's going, <laughs> right? So sometimes they can catch something and then you're like, hey guys, can you guys check that rule? Cool, let's pull up the rule, make sure it's good. Okay, the stream was wrong. Take that, Twitch. You know, usually they're wrong. They're, they're right. <clears throat> but that's besides the point. Um, but it's yeah. good. it's good for competitive integrity right like sometimes some battle reports out there you know they have just misplayed rules or something like that because you know what kill team is a difficult game right it's a lot happening yeah it's a difficult game especially if you're playing a team for the first time which we will have to do yes i can't play vet guard forever because it would be boring for <laughs> normal people not people with you know special vet guard fetishes like myself right <laughs> you know i get that Absolutely. I'm going to have to change. I get it. Okay. It's I understand. just required. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to go to Xenos and do other stuff. That's cool. It's exciting. I'm so excited to play other teams. <laughs> so excited to get rules wrong and have the internet humiliate me. But that's another I... thing, right? Is the internet is going to make fun of you sometimes. And that's, that's okay. part of it. Yeah. Yeah. You, your ego got to be down here, right? Like, we're just we're just dudes playing games, we're just dudes that. playing games, right? That's all we're doing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. having the best time we can. When it comes to making a battle report, really any content, this can apply to almost any content. We're just specifically trying to focus on battle reports. Yeah, yeah, like Hobby you know, Highlander and right. That that's a different level of production because uh, that's more that's more of a recorded scene, right? Mm -hmm. Where this is happening live. So. I forget what psychologists had done the whole thing where like, if you see it live, people will get upset when you're rearranging things, but no, because it's like live, of course, there's going to be small issues here and there. It happens all the time. And that's just human nature, you know? So mm -hmm. don't feel bad if something isn't fully perfect or what you want it to be. It'll mm -hmm. get there. Yeah. That's and one, it's okay. Yeah. That's one thing is I'm a perfectionist, right? Yeah. Um, I really push it forward. Uh, Giacomo knows like we won't start on a project until we're ready. We are ready to go. Right. Yeah. Um, and I know it can be frustrating. Right. Um, but that's not always the best. We could have been starting this battle report a year ago and we would be so much further along in our YouTube, um, and just growing as, as, as a business, right. As a YouTube, as content creators, you know, cause essentially we're three content creators, me, Giacomo and Saya, right? Yep. Um, I think it'd be interesting to do a, a deviating. Uh, this is my ADD here. Contrasting okay. between Hobby Highlander and uh, the battle reports. Because also this is live. Me and Giacomo do this live. We don't edit it, you know. Um, maybe if we were getting like, a, you know, 100,000 views, <laughs> we might edit it. But um, the same thing with the battle reports, right? We're just putting out the content so you guys can enjoy it. Hobby Highlander, we really want to push edited good content. YG, YG. Because with a lot of that kind of show, there is a lot of dull moments or maybe moments that don't need to be fully captured. And we can streamline the episode to be something very watchable. Because at the end of the day, Hobby Highlander is a show about watching paint dry. So, you know, I've never been that excited to go paint my walls and go, damn, that looks really cool sitting there for the next hour waiting for it to dry. But if you can streamline the process and get to the fun parts, you know, that's always that's always a lot more fun. And editing it, we can add extra bits, like when we let people know which paint it is, which color, which brand. Mm -hmm. That's things you can't necessarily do live as easily. Mm -hmm. So in the editing process, having those graphics or just other little things that pop up is is nice to have. So editing, you know, that's that's what that's for. Yeah, it's interesting. Um we're going to be doing a hobby Highlander live at LVO and we're slightly nervous because our 45 minute episode takes about an hour and a half to record depending on the paint. Some of the paint just doesn't want to dry. So you have to, it's going to be interesting because we're going to be sitting there <laughs> just like talking, you know, and being like, we're, the first thing we're going to say is like, you know, you signed up to watch paint dry, right? <laughs> yeah. 
and watch you know, us that, talk about it, I guess, you know? <laughs> that's that's really all we're doing. Yeah. Um, and then we'll have some nice high high resolution cameras. We'll have like like a like a big old screen so people can see what the cameras are seeing. Um, we'll have a, somebody doing what we do for battle reports for uh, for the stream itself. Alexander Popov will hopefully be there too, bringing us paint so everyone can can see glorious Alex. You know, shout and out to Alex. Shout out to Alex. We'll have Saya coming up, bringing up people, asking questions. Maybe we can do that while we're wait, having paint dry. G. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah. I have an ambition for that as well. We fucking we derailed so hard, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, yeah, this is the squad making games podcast. making content. You know. Yeah. ADD. I mean, we just talked about the introduction right now. He just said squad games podcast. So what are we like thirty minutes in? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Who needs a format anymore, right? Who needs formats a format? don't matter. Yeah. For well, so at least have a pathway to get to where you're going, but formats don't matter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what's fascinating is. Uh, Saya will probably be there being the host as per normal, having people come up and ask this question, but I have an ambition for LVO. I'm going to try to get another content creator, hopefully a painter of some sort, to at least come and say hi or be a guest for the episode. Uh, it would be really cool if we got like Miniac or Ninjon. We saw them both there. Don't think that'll happen. We're probably too small fry. Stolly just... Um, commented on our hobby highlander video today and i like nerded oh, out and you love that you called me on the phone for that yeah, I did. Like, <laughs> it's funny stolly he is a, an amazing content creator in my opinion and i don't think enough people watch him or torvarion's content oh, yeah. um yeah so like torvarion is just like an amazing painter right and he's hasn't really you know took in the red pill and gone squidmar with it and like you know you know, just gone straight to clickbait sometimes, but sometimes I, mean, I get it, man. Squidmar, you got to make your money. I get it. Get the bag, whatever. Yeah. I get yeah, it. yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But I love it. You know, like Squidmar is also an amazing content creator, but like, yeah, he's a good painter. So yeah. And, and it, his channel's flourishing, but Stolly's great because I used to, uh, follow tale of painter quite a lot when I was learning how to paint and mm -hmm. doing different recipes. In fact, my, I, my Ibrisil, um, Ibrisil, Eldar Army is based off of his <laughs> paint tutorials from his website. And then he started a, a YouTube channel and he kind of does what we do. He does the the whole um like what's the best paint from here and there. I really suggest watching his monument paint one, which is the 10 best monument paints. Um it might spoil it might spoil some future future things, but it's a great episode. Um I think that he definitely has a really good feel on the pulse for paints. Uh, he's been doing it forever, so he's a great person to watch. Um, but yeah, back back to back to Hobby Highlander, I guess. But it would be great. Free, free Stolly plug. <laughs> yeah, Stolly. Uh, I think I think it'd be great to. Are we pronouncing that right? I don't know, dude. I might hope be, we're pronouncing might be, that right. Might be Stolly. I have no idea. No idea. Man, I hope we're pronouncing that right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've always called him. You know, I don't know. I always, I call, I, but I, I mess up a lot of people's names. I called okay. my wife okay. Saya for the first year I met her and she never corrected me <laughs> to Saya. So if I'm saying your name incorrectly, Stolly, no, my wife has put up with it. So, so can you. Please. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it'd be great to get a content creator for a hobby highlighter live at LVO. It'd be nice. It'd be nice. Mm -hmm. You know, um, cause really a lot of battle reports, painter shows, painting channels, like the miniature industry and the content creation for miniature industry is like, it's very homegrown. You know, usually a lot of these guys, like I think maybe the most that one studio has probably 15 people. And that's not a lot. Yeah. Like realistically, most of it is like, Oh, it's the two guys. And maybe they hire an editor. Mm -hmm. like that's about it like we're this is it you know it's very homegrown roots so like team ups happen more often you know or it could happen more often just because that's the way it is um which is one of the things i really admire about this industry you know it's very much like you're doing it in your own you know mm -hmm. and, who uh, would be your dream guest for hobby highlighter live Ooh, uh, there's a couple that could never come on the show but they'd still be a dream guest of mine i'd want some that aren't even on youtube like just painters i've followed oh, yeah? over the years okay 
yeah, like uh, I'd love paint my little world, but I don't think he has a YouTube channel and he's also in Europe. So like mm. that's not happening. Do the same thing with King Corners painting. Like he's also in uh, Germany specifically. Like, so like they're, they're probably not coming. That's not a thing. How about you? Uh, I think Duncan Rhodes would be amazing on that would there be a fun one be but a real imagine fun one. if he hated his own paint that would suck <laughs> so that's not gonna happen uh you, know, you never know he could be like hey you know what i'm impressed by this color i guess yeah I mean, and then he could. has to go he has to go to his recipe guys and go like we have to make this better now yeah guys <laughs> how how is how is ak making this good of a paint or how is monument making this good of a paint and ours is awful that's not true i oh you know i don't think there's been a single bad two thin coats paint so far there yeah there hasn't been one that i didn't dislike there's been some that i've loved mm -hmm. like they just knock it out of the park um but they've all been pretty good almost i don't think they've every, ever scored low no almost every range has done relatively well and there's a couple that are not nearly as good like gw pff, not doing fantastic right now you know i think they they've I mean, only the, won I, one I, yeah then, so far uh, that we've released exactly like and GW itself, like they, as much as I do like them as a company, right? I started using their paints when I first got into the hobby. Um, that's kind of the thing. They have so much marketing behind them that of course you're going to use GW paint. It's part of the model range you just bought. It tells you what paints to buy. So like, of course you're going to do it. It's a great, still a good beginner paint. It's Not all of them. Some paint. of them suck, but some of them are, some of them are bad, but that's also, that's more of their chemical composition than really a color issue. Um, yeah, you know, so much for battle reports. Now we're talking about painting. Yeah, well, <laughs> we've only done two battle reports, right? Well, we're doing number three tomorrow. Number three for battle reports is you versus the stats man himself, David. Yeah. Uh, David is a legendary person here at Squad Games. Um, in fact, if he was a Pokemon, he'd be a legendary Pokemon. Oh, yeah. uh, or Magic the Gathering card, he'd be a legendary Magic the Gathering card. There can only be one. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, he does all the stats for MetaWatch behind the scenes. If anyone's seen the latest MetaWatch episode, which is came out a while ago, he was on it. Uh, we're waiting for MetaWatch until the end of the edition. We were about to do it for, uh, and then they were like, hey, the edition's ending. And I was like, well, I'm not going to do one in the middle of this. <laughs> uh, I mean, imagine imagine if it like ends in November. She's waiting for a while. Yeah, yeah, we'd be waiting for a while, which... Uh, would be upsetting, but uh, we'll probably wait till the end and then we'll do what team performed the best in the last data slate. And then we'll also do a rundown of what perf what team performed best uh, in the last season, because we have all the data from the last season of Kill Team. So we can kind of see for over the past year, you know, I think since like, I think it's right when Nightmare got announced sometime late November, we started uh, started recording data and um, basically nearly a year, right? Um, what team has been destroying everything? So uh, unfortunately we don't have, or fortunately we don't have all the, the Colts wins in recorded. There's no one like and, that time. And I think generally like still having that data is going to be important because I don't feel that the teams are going to change that dramatically into third edition i think a lot of the same stuff you're familiar with is gonna stay what um, do you think's gonna happen because when we look at are we just gonna skip the golden tickets Let, let's do golden tickets now gotcha let's let, we'll get back to third edition in just a second guys. yeah because that that was like a natural progression into our third topic <laughs> Uh, but let's go ahead and get into golden tickets because we we that is on our docket, you know. Yeah. Like I said, there's no there's no structure; it's just the roadmap to get there. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, here at, at Squad Games, we only have structure at tournaments, not yes, in our so personal it's... lives. <laughs> yeah, you don't need that, man. Um, yeah. So you know, golden tickets. So if you're still looking to go to the golden ticket event for a Kill Team. You know, there's a few places to get it. Dakota, where can they get them? So I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight left in the U.S. Um, golden tickets are really cool if you don't know what a golden ticket is. It is a invitation to the World Championships of Warhammer that happens in Atlanta. Um, there are some things there that are relatively, I would say, less competitive than what you would say 
what happens at LVO or WTC, All Valley Team Tournament, New York Open, Nova, all of these other tournaments that pride themselves on competitive competitiveness. Some of the detractments of the WCW is what we call the World Championships of Warhammer is last year, the last two, I think it was just last year. Last year, there were four hour rounds. Wow. Correct. That's quite That's a, a lot. Yes. Um, which was some people actually got locked into four hour round games. Now, if anyone's listening to this and they're like, oh yeah, it takes me four hours to play a kill team game at your local, your LGS, right? Uh, kill team games should not competitively should not last that long. Competitively. They should be lasting about two hours, right? Uh, yes. less, Just a little less than that. Game. Yeah. A little over than that is fine. But if you're taking three hours to do a kill team game, you're probably not ready for tournament play. Uh, because you should be held to uh, a faster time so that whether it's you or your opponent, you know, you can get a chess clock and time to, to practice to get faster, right? That's something that's useful. Um, but golden tickets are essentially a, it's a celebration of Warhammer, but it is also the golden ticket event, the golden demon event. Mike Brandt told me, it was the golden demon event of competitiveness for Warhammer. You take the champions from all over the world and they all get invited to come to one place. I think there was 30,000 people that tried to go to, tried to get a golden ticket this year or at least went to golden ticket events. And I think there's only like, I don't know, there's not nearly as many people coming to Atlanta. Um, in fact, I would probably say it's probably one to 2% of those of that amount of people probably two two to three percent right so you think like maybe like 300 people and that would did you also count that for like warhammer 40k and it, for aos yeah that would probably i'd probably wow. put it around like between six and nine hundred people coming that's still that's so small like it's that a was, big event but it's, yeah it, that's it a big small. event but you know like lvo just warhammer alone had like a thousand people so yeah and, and this is for three different games right because mm -hmm. i think they just do age of sigmar 40k and kill team and underworlds Oh, in Underworlds. Okay, so yeah. So see, look, and that's divided into four. So it's mm -hmm. even less per per game system. Yeah. That's quite a lot. So <laughs> quite little. Yeah, so if you've never heard of a golden ticket, uh, it is a... While it... Games workshops, I have... I'm a tournament organizer. I have a different belief system, right? Um, and that's okay. You know, they're allowed to run their events the way they want to. I'm allowed to run them the way that we want to. Mm -hmm. um, they don't really have time clocks as of yet. Uh, I guess we'll have to find out if they allow them this year. Um, and, you know, time clocks typically, in it's weird, time clocks. They ensure that you and your opponent both get the same amount of time. People are always scared of time clocks because they're always like, I am scared that I have to tap this little clock, right? But ultimately, you're already being timed at a tournament. You already have two hours, or right. an hour and a half or two and a half hours, whatever your time period is, no matter what, there's an invisible clock running and the TO is going to come over and tell you to stop playing. If you play on a clock, at least you're ensuring that you and your opponent have the same amount of time, which is equally fair, right? So it's something to, to keep in mind, right? Don't be afraid of the clock. It's there to be your friend. Trust me. Um, and if you're slow, then, you know, then you got to practice to be faster, you know? And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. It's uh, you can get used to hitting the button. Mm -hmm. You know, it just becomes part of the nature. End of turn, hit the button. Done. Yeah. So, uh, golden tickets that are left is going to be Nova is giving out one, and they have 88 players that sold out. It just Oof. sold out today. In fact, I know the last person who bought the last ticket, and that was Battle Brothers Tabletop Ben, literally bought the last ticket. Not Ben's Battle Brothers that no. I kept messing up forever. Yeah. I, I literally looked up his name today. Um, ben oh, that's Campbell. That's his legal name too? Yeah. Oh, that would have been funny. If ben that was Campbell, I'm excited to see you at Nova. You bought the last ticket. My guy. Heck yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. So next up, we have the All Valley Team Tournament, which we're expecting. We had 56 last year. We have 102 availability slots. Hoping to get between 70 and 80. And if we get to 102, that's fantastic. That's Even that would cooler. be amazing. Um, but we're getting, and that one's three tickets. That is three, right? Um, 
So essentially, I think right now we're sitting at 40 players. It's a month away in September, uh, end of September. Um, currently, everyone has a 1 in 13 chance of getting a golden ticket. So if you want a golden ticket, come on over to AVTT and... Uh, <laughs> your 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 odds go down the more people that sign up but still even if 102 people sign up you still have a one in 33 chance to get a golden ticket uh, it's it, pretty good it's pretty good and you get to play with your homies because it's a it's a team tournament a team and if tournament. your team wins all three of you get to go because it goes to the first place team and then trickles down from there um Next up, we have Kill Scream, and I think Kill Scream can hold 128 players. Mm -hmm. So if that sells out, you have a one in 28, one in a 128 person shot of getting that. Um, but you know it is hard to sell out an event, so uh, we'll have to see how many people show up there. Uh, it's a great event. I can't wait to see another Pacific Northwest player um, come to. Uh, WCW, see how they do. I'm very excited. Um, great bunch of guys and girls. Posting it up there, yep. yep. Uh, Kill uh, it, Team Cascadia is uh -huh. running that. I think it's not called Kill Scream anymore. It's called CritCon. CritCon They've, is the event, yes. Correct. And Kill Scream will be there, I think. I'm not sure. I know it's called CritCon now. They could have rebranded it completely from Kill Scream. But, oh, you're right. Um, hey, it's evolution. Yeah, we'll have to get Tyler on here to talk about it. But the cool thing is, it's a three-day event. I should, guess I should go over all of them. Let's go back to Nova real, okay. Nova real let's quick. Get, let's <clears> touch up on Nova. Nova is a two-day tournament, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, it's bracketed on day two. I don't like brackets for big tournaments, but it is what it is. I paid to go. Mm -hmm. I can't complain. I will complain, but I won't right now. <laughs> um, essentially, the only way that you can really guarantee getting in the top eight pod is if you go 4-0 or really close to getting, or there might be one or two players that are allowed to get in that are not four and um but imagine getting going three and one and getting stuck in 24th place and then uh you know going six and one it suck that would suck yeah but you know it is what it is that's the way brackets are and it's in, it's good to have other types of competition and kill team because it makes it interesting things to talk about all valley team tournament september 21st 22nd two days three rounds three rounds with the forged brush painting competition mm -hmm. it's going to be great kill scream is a three-day event um so day one on friday is a two rounds and then they have a wrestling match happening which is pretty cool i think they actually have a full it's a full con there's going to be painters there vendors all that kind of stuff so mm -hmm. it's going to be an amazing time day two i think they have three rounds and then there's a top 16 cut and it's not like an actual cut right um the 16 players get to move on and they continue playing swiss to the best of my not my knowledge it's not like a cut where they have to you know but there's basically two uh two more rounds on sunday and i believe on sunday there's also a narrative that you can play in so that should be a lot of fun for everyone attending that um tampa open is next i believe so that's the first weekend of october the second weekend of october is the tampa open in florida that is a games workshop event um i don't know who the to is going to be but that should be a lot of fun. I'm going to guess between 50 and 60 players will show up. Maybe I'll get surprised and 70 will show up or we'll have the same turnout as Dallas and 40 will. Um, you know, that's going to be another one in 50 shot, I'm assuming. I'm going to guess. Um, or more. Uh, and then we have SoCal Open, which I'm going to guess we're going to get to about 50 again this year. Maybe we'll stick around 40. I think we had 32 last year. So that's a one in 40 shot, one in 50 shot of getting a golden ticket there. And, and we're still doing day two. If you're not at the top, you can still play a separate tournament, correct? That's the third week of October. Um, hopefully the new edition's out by then. Hopefully it's the new edition's <laughs> out tomorrow. I would love that. Oh, yeah. uh, and we could have a lot more to talk about in this video. We'll be outdated <laughs> as of our the end of this video. But that's besides the point. <laughs> Okay, so uh, SoCal Open is Saturday. We have, um, I think, four rounds, and then we have a top eight cut, uh, and the top eight will come back for day two to be as sweaty as they want for three rounds. Um, first place is, you know, gets the golden ticket. Uh, 
everyone else can come back for day two and play in another tournament. So you can literally pay one ticket. And if you don't make top eight, you get to play two tournaments. And yes, that's two scores on ITC. Um, yeah, get get them points, homies. Get them points. Yes. And then uh, New York Open will be the very f- last weekend of October. My gosh. Wow, October is big for tournaments. We have Nova, then we have September 21st, 22nd for AVTT, and then it's October, 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 October. Uh, <laughs> New York Open happens in New York. Who would have guessed? Um, ran by Travis and the uh, Brooklyn Strategist. I think it's at the Brooklyn Strategist. Uh, it's it going to be, be, yeah, I think it's ran by the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Rats. And it's always been a great event. I've heard nothing but great news from the the guys up there and girls up there. Uh, really looking forward to seeing the outcome of that as well. Um, I don't think there's any other big events happening. I know that Travis said even if the the edition comes out on the day of they're running the new edition. And I think I'm probably going to do the same for SoCal Open. Um there's just so much where everyone's ready for the change. Who mm-hmm. wants to play out who wants to be the last hurrah, right? No, right. just as a tournament organizer, you gotta feed the hype. You gotta go, right? Gotta jump in. It's what the players want. It is what the players want. I'm sure Kill Scream is thinking the exact same thing. If it releases yep. the first weekend, they're like, and, we're uh, running it. We don't know the rules. I, yeah, that's gonna, gonna be the, the big either. thing. It's like, what are we we're gonna have to like immediately read everything? <laughs> There's no time for lunch breaks because you're just gonna be reading everything well, the, and hoping everything sticks. Yeah, the good news is usually during the the pre-release window, right? Uh, all the content creators are coming out talking about the rules, what the new rules are, this and that. Uh, it should be pretty cool, pretty exciting. Um, and so hopefully we'll know most of the rules, if not all the rules, two weeks before. Whew, I hope so. But content creators also don't get every rule correct. There's been times where people just misunderstand rules, hear this or that. So it's possible that there's still going to be misplays at each event coming up, right? But it's important that as a competitive community that we embrace it and we move it and we learn it quick and we move on. Yes. 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 Those are the last golden ticket events in the United States. Uh, if you guys are looking to get one currently AVTT, yes, it's our own event. Yes. I'm going to plug it. It does have the best, the best chance for you to get one and move on uh, to Atlanta which is in November it's the weekend bef- it's the week before Thanksgiving November 21st through like the 23rd it's literally 4 days of kill team 4 it's going to be exciting yes mm-hmm. and you can catch it on the stream as well if you're somewhere else in the in a different country in a different we'll streaming country. it for the two for the two days as well i don't know if they're streaming it in english so yeah it is <laughs> It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully next year we can we can um, stream Nova. I think that would be a lot of fun. That'd be a lot of fun. I'd love to do Adepticon as well. Yeah, I think that'd yeah, be good. be a lot of fun. I'll reach out to the relevant TOs and see if we can. We'll uh, work something out there. Uh, third edition. Yeah, third edition. Let's move it's, on to it. It's, it's like uh, October, right? You know? Yep. 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 It, uh, we, I remember waking up to this and going like, yep, this is this is coming out. Uh, the terrain looks cool. The box was cool. We already did our initial review on all the models. Um, I dig a lot of it. I'm digging a lot of the changes. Mm-hmm. And they're just subtle changes too. Like the equipment change was big for me. Just thinking like, you know, having 10 equipment points was just there were so many things to pick from. There's only four now. I'm sure there's still going to be ways to take additional. Like if you took the Grenadier, he probably just gives you grenades to take on him or something is my guess. I, I don't fully know. You know, obviously it's all speculation. Um, yeah, you know, and then they released a couple of rules and you got to see how uh, the data card is going. They have the multiplayer now, which is cool if you want to play the game, but you don't necessarily want to play against your friend. You want to play with them. Mm-hmm. And that's a good way to do it. So, Speak you know, of the art nice. real quick. The art looks sick. It is sick. You know, they didn't have to change too much, but just enough to be visually different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Um, I don't think we've talked about this new article 
uh, inches and icons. What to expect? Uh, so these are the new icons. They got rid of all the shapes. Good for them. Yep. You know, shapes were shapes were difficult. Um, not once you got used to them, but they're definitely de definitely hard to learn. Right. Originally. It's it's just easier to have a number. People can understand the number. Yeah. So we have an approved ops pack, a kill team pack, an upgrade pack. What else is there? Is this the climb rules? Does it actually yeah, say? Like... No, well, it it's doesn't. Showing doesn't... you the inches, and you can you we can we can infer how it's going to work. You go up four inches, just like before. It was four, you know, two circle, and then two over. So that it just seems easier. Mm -hmm. And now it's a, it's changed... a reposition rule. It's not a move. Yeah. So what's interesting yeah. about this, I know a lot of people are kind of making fun of reposition as a word, but it's actually important because there's like attaching an actual word to an action other than the move action is important because, you know, it, it actively makes reposition like an actual thing, right? So mandrakes could have a different rule now for their move, right? It might be called something else and you're only allowed to do one action per turn, right? So maybe that move is called something else. Like rather than like, you can only do one move action here or one this or one that. So the fact that they've kind of made these a little bit clearer, you know, um, is right. having the keyword good. is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, all, that's always a good one. Mm -hmm. There's the, the showing off some of the, the game modes, showing off the new environment. Let's talk about their, their data sheets real quick. So the data sheets are interesting because they got rid of, um, defense. They got rid of defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it also got also got rid of unique actions. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, it's just this dash. Do you have the that, book for? Do I have the book? I guess I could pull up Wahapedia too. Give me a second. I I want to. Oh, that is not the right one. I wanted to pull <laughs> Wahapedia. Um. Just so you can have a comparison between the two sort I of things. I just want to see if they changed any gun values on it, you know? Uh, I generally think most are the same. But yeah, actually, that's a good question. I didn't I didn't cross-reference this yet. So maybe they didn't change too I, much. I mean, maybe they did too, right? So it's the DACA boy, right? Yep. Let's see what we're looking at. We can cross-compare. I really hate these the ads on this website i can't wait for games workshop to release their free rules so i don't have to deal with these stinking apps okay we'll see what happens you know like maybe their app doesn't get updated yeah uh, you're right you know you're i right. kid because the 40k app sometimes has inaccurate stuff it's not often so they have unload slugs so make a shooting attack with this weapon within six of it you can reroll any or all of your attack dice the Dock Shooter is five attacks, hitting on fours, three, four damage. Right, with its special rules. Five attacks, hitting on fours, three, four damage, range six, ceaseless. So it's, Ceaseless made sense, so like... It's the same thing, uh, right? But notice you have two values of shooting. You have short range and you have the long range. Wrong. So for the short range, it's exactly the same rule, right? Because it says Dock Shooter, short range... Range six with ceaseless. It's ex exactly the same rule, yeah. just into keywords. So could this one not shoot at long range? So okay, it's the same thing. It's, it's the same thing. Just said you, that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like they just put it in keywords, so you don't have to read unload slugs. Like I know what ceaseless means. I reroll everything. Yep. Range six. All right, six inches. Easy. Right. Yeah. They definitely so, simplified it quite a lot. They they have to because they were they were putting so many paragraphs of like you had a whole novel on some of these characters. Well, you had to flip the back of the cards. What's going to be interesting is the spells. Is spells. We'll see. You know that mm -hmm. might the, they'll see if they can put it into keywords. If not, maybe that still has to have it because like Daka Dash itself still has mm -hmm. like their their writing right. Yeah. And which makes sense. They couldn't fit that into keywords, but anything that could be simplified probably will become simplified. Perform a free dash action and shoot action with this operative in any order. You can only select DACA shoot for that action. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think anything else changed, right? Ten wounds, ten wounds. Move six, save five up. Those are the same. Okay, well, there we go. Got my got my answer. Yep, and defense dice, since they don't How mention it, I'm, I'm assuming they literally it's going to be three. Yeah, they literally changed nothing just to be like, hey, you know, look. 
book. We changed nothing. To make it to make it simpler, because now there's just Dock and Dash, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a little easier to look at. Yeah, I I like to think that the green is how to do it, and then the little red diamond is like these are things you must you know stipulations in order to when you can or can't do it. So easy to look at on a card and instantly know what I'm looking for. Yeah, and and notice how it says that you can't be within control range, and control range was actively said that um, you can't do it with a conceal order, right? Yeah. So, or you can't do it within control range, which is essentially engagement which, range. Engagement which I range. Think they're changing it now. Yeah, but it's important to have the control range instead of engagement range because now you can say like, oh, if you're in control range of a of a, of a item, you can pick it up. If you're in control range of a door, you can open it. Here's what control range is, and these are all the actions that you can do while, while within, within control. control range, rather than like. Here's engagement range. If you're within an inch of a door, you can open it. If you're within an inch of this, you can open it. It's just, it just simplifies it, which is what Elliot's been saying, right? That he's trying to do. And I, I actively like that they're changing some of the rules. At first, I, I rolled my eyes at some of the words. Then I thought about it. Why are they doing that? Why are they doing that as a game design perspective, right? And right. it makes a lot of sense. It actively makes a lot of sense. And I, I do like that you because you didn't need GA on every one of the models like card ever. Because mm-hmm. most of the time, it, it's not going to say that. I'm sure Veteran Guard, for example, will probably have something that says, like, you can activate two guys with this ability yeah. at the turn. So it's like they're GA. And defense dice has always been three, so I'm sure that's going to be a core rule. You just have three defense dice. And AP reduces the number of defense dice you get, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of reducing your defense value. So you're like, what does the three and the two mean for new players who are just learning, right? Absolutely. Easier to explain. Yeah. So coming over to the Vespid Stingwings. Yep. We haven't talked about them at all other than what we thought about their looks. They this team seems busted. It's me. I I think they're strong. Um as most teams on release, save for when Crut came out, are the fact that generally they, pretty strong. The fact that they get to fly, they do a bunch of damage. And it's like, "Oh, well, you know, they have to shoot at their closest target. Okay, just fly them towards who you want to shoot." You know, <laughs> if you don't want to use a, commun- a communion point. Um, rather, rather interesting team. The models look great, right? Mm-hmm. They knocked it out of the park with this remake. Yeah, the Neutron, the, I like their lore behind the operatives. The, the lore is like, you know, that when they fly, their their weapons do more damage because it charges the crystals inside their guns more. It makes sense, but when Elliot calls them a... Glass cannon. Glass cannon, and they have nine wounds. I don't think they're a glass cannon. <laughs> I mean, they got they got five up armor save, but you could argue the orcs have ten wounds and five up armor save, and maybe orcs they only, can be surprisingly hard. Maybe they only hardy. have six models. You know, like we can. Oh uh, we... yeah, you're right. Well, I'm assuming it's going to be ten. Pretty sure it's going to be ten. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. You know, communion's cool. They show the how some of the rules work. Um, which is and pretty de- normal. Devastating too. Now, Giacomo is interesting. I don't know if they actually call out what devastating does, but what does it do in 40k? Well, devastating is wounds you, you just can't you can't ignore. So it's I'm assuming wounds, it's going right? to be essentially that that's what we've known it in the common conscious. But it's the the rule is now devastating too. So maybe mortal wounds will be a different thing. Yeah, yeah. So who who knows, right? Yeah. Like, uh, and I, mean, I, guess, I guess it makes sense because then it's like if you play 40k and you play Kill Team, a lot of the rules are kind of similar. So, mm-hmm. like, it makes sense. You can easily figure it out. This guy has something called Sky Blast. I wonder what that is. Guess we'll find uh, out. We'll probably, find out. It's this keyword. Probably on Tuesday morning. Notice how, <laughs> does it say fly on the keyword? It doesn't say fly, right? No, it doesn't. But I th- so I'm wondering how they're is it just a main rule that the army has now if it has fly? It could. It says it says it up here somewhere. Well, yeah, uh, it says it right there. They they have the fly ability, but like before, it maybe used it's, to be maybe under, it's a team under special keywords. Rule. Yeah, maybe it's exactly. A team it's probably gonna be team special rule. Because um, I'm wondering, like, just as an example, the the salvager, the the hearthkin salvager with the jump back. I forget what he's called. Is is that model gonna say? has the fly keyword like i'm just curious you know because well, they're showing keywords and i'm not seeing so it here's here's this the operative has moved or used fly in the same turning point i'm wondering if fly, if fly is, is an action is an action similar to reposition right 
So it is saying so long as the operative has used fly in the same turning point. So maybe fly is well, just yeah, an action in the game. Because fly is now you go up, you disappear from the board, and then you reappear on the board in a spot within your range. And maybe some operatives will have the ability to use fly. Maybe like, maybe oh, we'll get... Oh, that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, perhaps we get like models in the future that do have fly or it's just one model on a team with a jetpack or something like that right that has the fly rule so they jump up disappear and come back that would be cool that's interesting i mean that's how fly works now which is nice so that means you know you don't have to worry about going around an inch or anything because you're flying over things and you're not triggering stuff i don't know i guess we'll see it as we keep playing the game mm -hmm. it's too early to find out yeah so we have communion which um not interested in reading, so we're not going to. <laughs> no, yeah, we're not trying to give you a whole deep dive into it, just kind of what some rules are. Uh, they show you a few options of equipment now, and like I mentioned earlier, equipment has been simplified. You have four equipment points, and then you can take another one with one of their... Thingies. Recon step stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like, cool, you know, that's, that's that. There you go. Yep. Simple. So... And now they also announced, which a lot of people are talking about, the co-op mode and the, the singles mode. Yeah, more they're talking more about the co-op than the singles from what I'm hearing. And it makes sense, right? Like, let's say you have a friend who's in getting new into the game. They don't quite get it. And you don't want to just, like, rip them apart and just, like, you lost the game, right? So you go in with this format first and you just play... The, uh, have them shoot like easy targets like get used to the mechanics that Dude, you know there's no pressure be, this could be great for a stream as well like so imagine imagine giacomo a battle mm -hmm. report you and me are doing this right we're, we're we're together and the stream you know buys like two oh, space oh, marines oh, to yeah, fight they're buying us. the enemies yeah and, okay. you know that would be cool that would okay be that's cool. a fun one i'll Not keep that lie. in mind yeah the noggin yeah <laughs> Yeah, so it's cool, you know, and and just like that, you can have your own little scenarios with co-op, and they were they were nice enough to include it. It's not something that's like an absolute selling point for the game. It, maybe it is for you guys, bro. Um, since they don't have a Tyranid team, um, right now, you can you use know, your yeah, yeah, because it's been said, I think that because pretty they they have like a so if you go down, you can see the two types of profiles mm -hmm. they have. For monsters. Uh, oh, they have a Tyranids right here. That's probably where I got the idea. Yep. And uh, look, don't worry. Intercession's still around, guys. They just showed a picture. So of they it. have... Where? See, there's an Intercessor right there. Oh, yeah. Totally, totally, yep. totally. Yep. Intercessors just... are still around, guys. They're not yeah. going away. So are Tyranids. They're coming into the game, right? Uh, at least in this format. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So there's only... So each model... You have to tell me, G. What is, what is this saying? Give me the rundown. Uh, so you got brawlers, you got marksmen, and I'm assuming they might give you more. But like these guys have certain mechanics, right? Like a brawler is gonna be in conceal, trying to get to you until he can get and fight you, and then a marksman's gonna try to shoot you and dash away, so it's not in combat, right? Mm -hmm. That's how their N NPC game NPOs work. So simple things that are easy to understand, right? You don't want to make it too complicated, or else no one's gonna control these. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then it shows you like just their what their stats would be. Very simple, you know. They're not going to make it too hard. Two shoot actions during its activation. My gosh! And that's that's probably a heavy version of this weapon, right? That's and why it's called a heavy. Ceaseless. That's a that's a tough brawler, and that's a heavy marksman. Dude, so you probably these have like are a wild bro. You could you probably could have like a light marksman who has four three APL, four, like two three. Yeah, again, a, a heavy marksman. So that would be like a space marine, right? Okay. Yeah, okay, like, okay, so, so okay, that makes so more probably, sense. Yeah, it probably depends on, like, are you a heavy, light, or whatever, are you tough, are you weak? Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, so, that's like, cool. you can create monsters, right? Like, that's fun, and you could probably, you know, like... We now could that probably make our works, own, too. Exactly, you could make your own for uh, for narratives, mm -hmm. narrative events. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, that's cool. That's exciting. So that yeah. they have missions themselves include deployment maps for Killzone Vulcus and the Gallodark. Yep, which is good. Um, that'll be in yeah. The book. I I would imagine this being relatively difficult on beta decima. Yeah, I mean you'd have to make up your own and figure that out. Like mm -hmm. again, you could which you could totally do because this is this is more of a relaxed casual game or a narrative yeah, cool. thing. Yeah, it's fun. Just do it with your friend. You know, teach them I, how to play the game this way. I don't think I'm gonna play any sad hammer by myself, but I'll definitely play this. No, I think the sad hammer days are like 
you people are already doing that like you know they're they're but they're more doing it to be like if i move here and this guy moves here and they're tactical advice they're not actually really playing solo but the fact that it's there is there right because this mm -hmm. you'd play these monsters versus yourself mm -hmm. so you could play it, you know solitaire is a game and people love solitaire right yeah so it's for somebody. It's not, not for me. I think I'm going to stick with the multiplayer. And from a selling tactic perspective, this is like, hey, you can play multiplayer with friends, right? So you buy this box with two teams in it. You keep those two teams for yourself and have your friend buy something else, right? Like more stuff to sell. And I think, buy these other models. And I think that's about it. That's been um, that's been dropped out here. Well, that's right? about it, you know. Um, but there's probably more nuances if you want to take a whole look into everything, but. That's been done to death, so I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, every other content creator has gone out there and made every single video imaginable. On um... I, I was I was immediately joking about like uh, my my joke is we just watched this 30 second digital clip of something. Now let's watch a 40 minute analysis video on everything <laughs> inside it. That is fair. And that that is what happened, and that's okay, you know, because I'm I'm clicking on those 40 minute videos, so I'm part of the problem, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, so I think that's about it. Let's let's end with a little bit more about the the battle report. Um, I felt sure. like we didn't go over it nearly as good enough as I wanted to. So right. I'll kind of go over the equipment that we have, right? Um, so we have four Sony mirrorless cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, we have three Mevo cameras. We have an IP Evo 4K um, document camera for our dice. Uh, our dice we have um two road mic sets uh or two road mic to go sets and a road mic ai thing that makes them so that you could have four mics together uh, sounds cool we have multiple samsung mics again we have seven lights i think we have two fivotex one small rig canon uh two newers one ring light and then we have a uh like a big old um fabric led that goes over the top of the tables and stuff yes. um what else do we have we have some decent lenses a lot yeah. of prime lenses that help you keep uh, some sharpness we mm -hmm. use some kit lenses as well because you know we have the lenses we may as well use them kit lenses and are probably best when you're trying to go to an event and stream it gives yeah, you the you most just want some variety yeah, like you have uh, versatility to just, if I have to change it really quick, I can. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can get a prime lens and you can have it set up somewhere nicely, prime lens is the way to go because they're generally sharper. Correct. Correct. That We use prime lenses for uh, Hobby Highlander. Yes. Yeah, yes. but we're still missing one 4K, so we still have one camera that's... Well, we'll update it. You know, it takes time. This is a collection. You're it's right. not a race. It does. It does. Um we also use three stream decks, uh, multiple sets of headphones. We have um, laptops, um, iPads, the controls and things. Big old, big old stream rig computer with a thirty seventy inside it, and a lot of memory. A lot of memory. We need the storage for recording. Mm -hmm. Especially uh, a good internet, recording. a good internet connection. That's rare. So like you just happen to have a very good internet connection yep. in the studio. So uh, I that work, works. I have AT and T, and we have their fiber optics. So it's like nine hundred ninety nine. <laughs> it's just like the download and upload speeds insane. It's ex yeah, it's <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. It's good. It's good. It's very yeah. good. Uh, that does actually help a lot, a lot. So, oh man, we have a lot of we have a couple tables. Tables right, are really tables. important. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, positional tables. Um, we have two Samsung microphones for different things. Um, and again, like this has been like eight years of collecting stuff, right? Amassing. Amassing. And like this is like mine and Giacomo's like collection put together, right? Um, but again, you don't have to start off with this, all this equipment. You can start off small. And in fact, like, you might blow a lot of money because what if you what if you hate it? What if you don't? Right, get an then audience? you're like, you're thousands of dollars in the hole. You know, like it's not not particularly smart. No, because um, yeah, that's another thing. You should see if you even want to do this because mm -hmm. right? like you tried it once and you're just like, it's not for me. Yeah, I wanted to originally start off with painting videos. I wanted to paint stuff and watch people watch me paint. You know. Um, and then it's slowly grown from there. And then me and Giacomo started squad games 
And then we were like, hey, we can stream events. Let's make it happen. And right? here we are. <laughs> yeah, our first big stream event was our very first LVO. It was interesting. We started eight months before. We st- our first tournament, we had five players. And five players. Yep. And it was Giacomo, Saya, and me made up eight. eight yep, just eight. to make sure we can hit eight and yeah. be legit. <laughs> yeah, and then I played vet guard and I ran him down. I was like, all right, I'm just going to run him at you, kill him. Cool, I'll walk around. <laughs> I was a T.O., it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not trying to win a game. Uh, and then I think we did like four or five events and we never broke 12 until the first All-Valley. We hit 42, which was insane. Huge and, for us. And then we did a December event. I think we hit 12 again. And then we did uh lvo with 87 and that was big yeah for us yeah we had you on the stream which was the very Mm -hmm. first time we did it and the computer didn't work and emmanuel had to come over and jiggle wires and then it worked and we're like thanks emmanuel (laughs) saya ran the store and then i was the to for 87 players it was magnificent i don't think i slept for a month leading up to it because we had to create we all have a third party terrain building terrain like yeah. non-stop yeah it was insane it was insane oh that's a, yeah that's another thing you know you got to have uh, you got to have all the tools of the trade when you're doing battle reports too yeah you my thing is, is like you, if you're requiring painting everything has to be painted terrain whatever right so right it's gotta you gotta try to make it match if you can you know build up to it mm-hmm. you know get there so and then the next year we started having streaming at more events not every oh. event. And then we, I think we started off with like 12 players, our first event again. And then it went up to like 24 and it kind of varied. AVTT hit uh, 56. And then uh, LVO, we had a hundred, we sold 164, 131 people showed up still to this day. It's still the biggest kill team tournament in the world. Um and let's hope to smash those records. Hell yeah, we're going to smash it. We're going to smash it out of the park, uh, I hope. And then <laughs> uh, this year, pretty much every tournament we've gone to outside of Pacific Skirmish, I think we've actually streamed. We streamed Bay Area Championship. We, we streamed Midsummer Mayhem. Uh, I think we are going to be streaming ABTT, and we're going to be streaming SoCal Open, and then... Recording SoCal Open, unless they give us the internet connection. Correct. We're going to record SoCal Open because they don't have internet, and I'm not going to buy some kind of crazy hotspot and make my internet, my phone bill go out the roof. Right. Because requiring a two-year plan and whatever else AT&T wants to throw at me. uh, Again, don't go go above your means Mm because then you could just ruin you financially. Yeah. That's not what we're here for. We're here to enjoy it. Uh huh. And then we'll probably stream West Coast Championships, which is going to be a fabulously fun event. And then we're going to go to ALVO and stream there too. So, so you got uh, live battle reports and you got recorded battle reports. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So if you guys are interested in uh, in following us, uh, follow our YouTube because um, that's where Subscribe. those that's where our battle reports mm-hmm. are going to be. Um, we might get some other battle reports on our Patreon if you guys are interested in joining our Patreon. Uh, we do the Squad Games redact- Redacted podcast, which we have one coming up for that as well. I think we've only, we haven't recorded very many this year for that one. But um, it's more behind the scenes stuff. You know, some crazy stuff has happened in our lives. Different, it's less, less, less. Redacted things, some would say. Yes. In the Redacted yes. podcast. Things that we don't want to talk about um, on this podcast. <laughs> that we shouldn't talk about on this podcast. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. Agreed. And then, uh, yeah, if you want to do that or you want to check out Hobby Highlander, maybe you've never seen it before. Um, If you're not a big hobbyist, go check it out. Give us a give give us some support. You know, that's tell us what you think. Yeah, that is something that we really care. It's me. It's my favorite thing that we do. The hobby. It's a lot of fun to make. It is. Yeah. Do you have any shout outs? Absolutely. You can join the conversation on Discord. Our Discord is in the show notes or if you're watching this on YouTube, it should be in the description. So you could join there, you know, share your painting, share what you like about the game, share what you like about other games. We'll listen, we'll talk, and uh, the community is pretty receptive. You can find me on Instagram at wargaming underscore studios, where I'm working on miniatures all the time, uh, whenever I can, that is. 
And like we mentioned earlier, we're on YouTube, so you could follow us there. If you're listening to this on YouTube from the other podcast, the other podcast channel we have, we do have the main one too, which is Squad Games Entertainment. Link is in this description for the podcast, but not for that one. It had to create one and it made its own, so we have two channels. Um, yeah, but we you have know, two YouTube, YouTube channels. It's wild. Yes, and that other YouTube <laughs> channel, the the audio gets distorted because of the way it compresses and sends it. So if you want less compressed audio and better sound, then you want to go to our main channel, Squad Games Entertainment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, my last thing I would like to shout out is uh, Saya from Tabletop Mayhem. Um, go check out her YouTube channel. She does a lot of D&D &D content. And when Hivestorm releases, she's going to be doing a lot more Kill Team stuff, getting back a lot more into Kill Team and doing D&D. &D. And here on Squad Games, you might see some D&D &D content come from me because I've You're played a tabletop a, man. I, I'm, I'm big into D&D, &D, very big, <laughs> to say the least, right? I think I ran a five-year campaign that we met two times a week. And that was our most recent campaign. So how does someone have this much time in their life? They sacrifice sleep. There you go. Go to sleep, guys. <laughs> that's what you got to do. So, um, but that's it. That it's a, from us. That's it from us, Tao. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> that's it from us, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Go to sleep. Peace. <laughs> Unless you're driving, don't go to sleep. Yeah, don't go to sleep when you're driving. Stay awake. Drink that caffeine.